Well, hello, everyone. Here, let me just adjust the microphone. I should know better. Joe Bell taught us how to use a microphone many years ago, and Joe Bell is here. So, welcome. What do you think about this great space for our annual event, State of the Yuba? Let's thank Gold Vibe Kombucheri. I feel like like the change of venue, I told our leadership team, we're gonna have to be, it's like the Tonight Show, we're gonna have to be a little bit more rock and roll. So I'm Julie Pokrant, I'm the development director at, at the South Yuba River Citizens League. Can I take a quick read of the room? Can you raise your hand? Who's a member and a volunteer? Okay, whoo, all right, okay, sponsors, keep your hands up, keep your hands up, sponsors, partners, Okay, and curious, if you're just new and just want to learn about Circle, maybe you've moved to the community, you've been hearing about the Circle thing, you want to get involved, any of you new people out here? All right, okay, our strategy worked. Okay, so please know we appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, even if you just came in for a pint of kombucha, even if you're just discovering what kombucha is. Apparently, some people know what kombucha is. Okay. So, as you've seen around the room tonight, Circle is implementing large-scale restoration projects throughout the watershed, throughout um, our mountain meadows, um, our forests in the upper part, all the way down to the lower Yuba and its floodplains. Is this better? As you know, okay. Okay. Also, Circle uses these projects as outdoor classrooms, and it benefits thousands of students every year um, throughout several counties. And you know what? There's more to do. As our work expands, Circle's heart, which is you, our people, our members, our volunteers, and our future supporters, our heart must expand too to help us stay strong. Funders and partners only come to Circle because they know we have community backing. And we're only able to attract the grants needed to build a resilient watershed only if we have the support of generous people like you. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, well, thanks. So again, strong heart means we can be effective and we can have an effective reach and make a difference for this critical watershed the Yuba watershed, especially in the face of climate change. So please join us or renew your membership tonight. It's the perfect time because we have a drawing. Did you know we have a drawing? No. Okay, here's the drawing. Okay, here's the deal. Anybody who makes a membership gift, a general donation, a ticket or merchandise purchase is automatically entered into our drawing for a free ticket to Wild for the Yuba. It's our gala and fundraiser for our college scholarship program. You know the one we're awarding tonight? If you haven't met Tony and Katie, those that's our development team back there, go introduce yourself. They'll be able to tell you the various ways you can support Circle, and they can enter you into the drawing. And believe me, and there's a special price for Wild for the Yuba tickets tonight. It's down to $85. Tomorrow it goes up to 90 for members and 95 for non-members. So act now. Um, yes, this is a little bit of a commercial. So thanks for your patience. So. Um, hey, you know what? I'm happy to talk to you too, but I have to get off the stage. And so without further delay, we're going to start our program by welcoming our community engagement manager, Maddie Davis. Well, thank you all so much for being here with us this evening. I am so grateful to see all of your wonderful faces. And I have the distinct honor this evening of standing before you to recognize an individual whose dedication to our watershed embodies the very essence of community stewardship. Each year, the South Yuba River Citizens League presents the Volunteer of the Year Award to an individual who exemplifies extraordinary commitment and service to Circle and the watershed. This year, it's with great pleasure that we bestow this honor upon Russell Stabler. Let's give Russell a hand.
Owen oh, Russell, you might be standing with me for a moment while I honor you, but excited that you're here. Please come join me. Russell has been a cornerstone of Circle for the past three years, tirelessly dedicating his time, expertise, to the preservation and enhancement of the Uber River watershed. His contributions extend far and wide from his involvement in numerous volunteer initiatives, including shifts during the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, river monitoring, outreach events, to his dedication as a river captain, where he led volunteer river ambassadors. Russell's impact transcends volunteerism. He's a source of inspiration and positivity, a beacon of light within our community. His boundless enthusiasm for Circle's causes is infectious, and his genuine passion for the work that we do shines through in every interaction. Russell doesn't just dip his toes into volunteering. He dives in headfirst, metaphorically speaking, of course. Although knowing Russell, he's probably done that too, just to check the river temperature. What sets Russell apart is not just his commitment to service, but also his remarkable ability to connect with others. Whether he's sharing his wealth of knowledge about the trails in our area, or engaging the public at events like Victorian Christmas by telling stories about his favorite river spots, or simply lending an ear to staff, Russell's warmth and sincerity have left an indelible mark on all of us around him. And in many ways, Circle embodies the spirit of Rory Lynn Gotham, after whom this award is now named and was last year's recipient. And although she isn't here this evening, she sends her congratulations to Russell. Like Rory, Russell is a true champion of the South Yuba River, leveraging his past experiences and expertise to make a meaningful difference in our community. His unwavering dedication, coupled with his genuine kindness and generosity, makes him a truly deserving recipient of this honor. So as we celebrate Russell's achievements tonight, let us take a moment to reflect on the profound impact that all volunteers like him have on Circle. Their dedication is the heartbeat of our mission, pumping life into every project and event, even if it means getting their hands a little dirty or a lot dirty depending on the day. Their self selfless contributions serve as a testament to the power of community activism and remind us of the importance of stewardship in preserving our natural resources for generations to come. So please join me in congratulating Russell Stabler, the recipient of the Rory Lynn Gotham Volunteer of the Year Award. everyone. My name is Eric Dunn. I am the Wild and Scenic Film Festival Director and it's a pleasure to be here today to present, to present, thank you, uh, to present Circle Sponsor of the Year Award. We at Circle feel extremely grateful to have such an engaged and supportive community. Without the community we simply couldn't bring everyone the diverse programming that we offer. Be it our annual river cleanup, the river ambassadors and monitoring programs, donor events like Wild for the Yuba, or the flagship Wild and Scenic Film Festival in February, it's the support of members, donors, and sponsors that allow us to thrive. This evening, we would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge a special local business that has been an incredible supporter of ours from their inception. I'm honored to be able to announce that our 2024 Sponsor of the Year is Three Forks Bakery and Brewing Company. It's hard to believe that it's already been a dec over a decade since Three Forks reached their Kickstarter goal. In the time since opening their doors, Three Forks has firmly cemented themselves as a community fixture that has been a stalwart supporter of Circle and our work from the outset. Even with last year's change in ownership, Three Forks' support of Circle has not wavered. For many years now, Three Forks has played a significant role in our organization's health and by sponsoring the Yuba River Cleanup and Wild and Scenic Film Festival, among other events. Whether it's been our requests for food for the Wild and Scenic Welcome Ceremony, kegs of beer for the annual cleanup volunteer party, hosting our Emerald Evening, or general assistance in just spreading the news about Circle and Wild and Scenic, 
Three Forks continues to be there ready and willing to lend their unwavering support. This support ties closely with Three Forks' commitment to supporting local and sustainable agriculture that helps protect our watershed while supporting our talented local farmers. They strive to be as close to zero waste as possible, with much of their food waste going like coffee grounds, spent beer grain, being used by local farmers to feed their animals. Three Forks truly works to take care of the place we call home by being light on the land, keeping money on our local economy, and treating their customers and community with care and respect. So for their commitment to Circle, the health of the Uber River watershed, and their partnership in promoting change for a more sustainable future, we are very pleased to present the second annual Circle Sponsor of the Year Award to Three Forks Bakery and Brewing Company. I think we have uh, Sean and Whitney, if you can come on up to receive that award, please. Thanks again, y'all. Good evening, I'm Alicia Wiseman, Circles Watershed Science Director. This year, I'm incredibly honored to award the Partner of the Year Award to the Tahoe National Forest. <laughs> Don't come up yet though, hold your horses. <laughs> All right, Circles' relationship with the Tahoe National Forest has been long-standing, productive, and dynamic, and it continues to grow, supporting the impactful work across the watershed. Through this strong partnership, Circle has had the pleasure of engaging in an unprecedented 275,000-acre landscape-scale forest health project. As a founding member of the North Yuba Forest Partnership, Circle works closely with the Tahoe National Forest to increase the pace and scale of forest health work in our watershed. The Tahoe National Forest has also been integral as the main landowner and thought partner in Circle's development and implementation of a thousand acres of high quality meadow restoration projects. That's right. They have facilitated recent projects like the Van Norden Meadow Restoration Project, a 500-acre project at the headwaters of the South Yuba River, <laughs> and the 240-acre Haskell Peak Meadows Project at the headwaters of the North Yuba River. Uh, <laughs> together, we're enhancing these climate-resilient habitats to support ecosystem benefits such as increased groundwater recharge, carbon storage, and improved water quality. Circle also works with the Tahoe National Forest on trailhead design and outdoor visitor safety, the Yuba River cleanup, and education programs such as our high school water quality program and our outdoor high school field science summer programs. Truly, this partnership supports a breadth of positive impacts throughout our watershed. And we look forward to continuing this effective partnership for years to come. So without further ado, I'd like to invite you guys to come on up. Congratulations, Tahoe National Forest. <laughs> Rowdy Bunch. So, hello. Hey, so I was told we had 30 to 60 seconds, so I'm gonna make the best use of those 30 to 60 seconds as we can. <laughs> so I just wanna tell you that by supporting Circle, your support, you're, you are being stewards of your national forest. I hope you come out, I hope you enjoy the national forest, I hope you come out and see all the wonderful work that you are supporting in helping make this place a sustainable and resilient place for generations to come. So thank you so much, this means a lot to us. 
as a federal agency, we don't get a lot of awards like this. <laughs> so we really appreciate it. It makes us feel good about what we do every day. So thank you so much for this award. All right. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm Monique Strait, and I'm the edu a little loud. I'm really loud. So <laughs> I'm Monique Strait, the education director, um, and I am here to present the final award of the evening: uh, Circle's annual Environmentalist of the Year scholarship. This $4,000 scholarship is awarded to a distinguished senior who has demonstrated a commitment to the environment through community leadership and environmental activism. It is my distinct honor to be here tonight to present the 2024 Environmentalist of the Year Scholarship to Asher Perla. <laughs> Asher is graduating from Marysville Charter Academy of the Arts with an astounding 4.3754 GPA. I didn't even know it went that many decimal points, but really, really impressive. He plans to pursue a degree in ecology and evolutionary biology with the goal to weave community leadership and conservation action throughout his career, maximizing the impact of both his work, both work on people and natural systems. In his application, he wrote about how the earth sustains us, and he believes it is our duty to respond in kind by protecting ecosystems like the Yuba River watershed and life from the threats they face. Throughout Asher's life, he has dedicated his time to ecology, ornithology, conservation, and environmental work. His greatest passion is birding and is one of the top birders in the state of California and he's only a senior. Over the years, Asher has dedicated hundreds of hours to birding, whether that is leading field trips at different bird festivals, founding the Oregon House Bird Club, serving as a regional reviewer for the community science website ebird.org, conducting bird surveys for different organizations and agencies, or monitoring western purple martens. Asher also holds the Yuba County record for most bird species observed in a single calendar year. Very, very impressive. If you haven't figured this out already, this young man is dedicated to his community, enriching his knowledge, environmental activism, and volunteering. If you have a question about birds, Asher is your guy. Through his letters of recommendation, Asher's teachers spoke very highly of him. They described him as a self-motivated critical thinker, a strong leader, and a team player with unbounded curiosity and a passion for knowledge. He cares deeply about his community, peers, and the world around him. Asher has also volunteered for Circle over the years. He volunteered as one of the fellows during Circle's Youth Outdoor Leadership Opportunity, or our YOLO program, our annual Yuba River Cleanup, and has sat on, the, on a youth panel during our 2024 Wild and Scenic Film Festival. Throughout the YOLO program, Asher was highly motivated to help install cattle exclusion fencing, eager to learn about meadow fringe aspen habitats, and often took a leadership role amongst his peers. And when he did YOLO, he was only a freshman. So a freshman taking on this leadership um, with many of the peers that were older than him. We all learned so much from Asher that week. And I was immediately impressed about his deep understanding of the local environment and the bird species around him. He would often point out, oh, that's a, and I can't even name the bird species, but he would, he would often let us know what we were seeing and hearing, um, and sh he was just very willing to share his knowledge um, with me, with our other circle staff, and, and the other YOLO participants. 
Uh, Asher truly embodies an environmental steward and am, I am confident he will continue to be involved in his community and inspire those around him. When asked about how living in the Yuba River watershed has influenced him, he wrote, growing up immersed in the ecosystem of the Yuba River watershed has shaped me by safeguarding my mental health, filling me with awe and respect for the natural world, and inspiring me to devote my life to studying and protecting wild places like the Uber River through conservation and community leadership. If Asher, if you want to come on up. I have one last thing to say, but I just want to bring him up here. <laughs> Thank you. Here's your answer right there. Um, so Asher, I just wanted to say, I am so excited to see where your path leads you and know that the Yuba River watershed and the rest of our environment um, is in better hands because of people like you. So congratulations. How incredible is Asher? Another round of applause. It's really fantastic. And remember that our ability to support these young environmentalists who are really working to kind of be the change of the future happens with your support in our Wild for the Yuba event June 8th. So if you haven't got tickets, tonight's the night to do that, but they'll be on sale for a while longer. Um, my name is Aaron Zellerman, and I'm the executive director of the South Yuba River Citizens League. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the South Yuba River Citizens League, known as Circle. We are also the Yuba River Waterkeeper, member of the International Waterkeeper Alliance. Before I dive in, take a couple of minutes to recognize a few of the elected officials that are joining us here this evening. Ricky Heck and Karen Hull from Nevada Irrigation District. Thank you both. And Sue Hook from the Board of Supervisors as well. And if there are others, I'm sorry. <laughs> At Circle, we have been educating and inspiring people, advocating and restoring the watershed for more than 40 years. You are here, or perhaps just listening in the background, to our annual State of the Yuba event. It's an update, an open door to the work that we do. We're busy all year across the watershed, including many events you all may have participated in. The Wild and Scenic Film Festival, the cleanup, or some of our restoration projects. This event is our chance to take all of that work we do throughout the year and all of those different departments and share it with you all. And to connect with you, to listen about the parts that keep you excited and motivated. Our motivation comes from a sense of place. This was a point made by Shelley Covert, spokesperson for the Nissanon, and echoed by Nevada City Mayor Daniela Fernandez at the Wild and Scenic Film Festival welcome party. And it really resonated deeply with me. In summary, the idea is that being proactive and intentional in where we spend time and our recognition for those places that bring us peace. Everyone here tonight has those places, whether they're out the front door or maybe down the road. We are all here because we are happier and healthier people when we get to spend time in the Yuba. As Gary Snyder said, nature is not a place to visit, it is home. When a place is home, we take the time to care for it, strive to keep it clean, and healthier so that it may endure beyond us. And that intentionality and care is why we are here this evening. And when I say we, I mean the incredibly dedicated Circle staff whose work I have the pleasure of sharing a little bit with you, and the Board of Directors who've been keeping this train rolling for more than 40 years now. So if you're on the Board of Directors, please either stand up or wave so that we can appreciate all the work that you do to keep this, keep this thing moving. And now, Sturkle staff, please either stand up or give a big wave so that we can all show you some love. Woo! 
I also want to be clear that we means the people who came here this evening knowing Circle as members, donors, and volunteers, and are just interested in an update or learning a little bit more. But I think we also means all of the people that are here just happen to be enjoying a beverage. I hope you are hearing things this evening that intrigue you, that pique your interest enough to come over to one of the tables and learn a little bit more, or maybe ask a question when I'm done. At Circle, we advocate, inspire, and restore throughout the watershed. And while our focus is on the watershed, our influence spans the state and the country. Our on-tour wild and scenic film festival events, conference talks, educational videos and programming, our advocacy and collaboration work with state and federal agencies. The care we demonstrate and work we do here in this place ripples out across the state and country. Doing the work we do, we have a number of dedicated departments, which individually and collectively are helping us increase the impact we have in the Yuba and across the state. Like I said, hopefully you've had the opportunity to chat with them at those posters and speak to the true experts here. But if not, there's gonna be time after I'm done speaking to get more familiar with the work that we do. Our Wild and Scenic Film Festival and on tour program where activism gets inspired. River People, the central hub for volunteer coordination, communication, for, of, and by Circle. Our education department, working with school-aged and lifelong lear learners. Our watershed science department, Circle's hub for all things restoration and monitoring, with a handful of posters to reflect the diversity of work we do. Our advocacy department, because our voices are stronger together. And of course, none of it would be possible without the incredible diligence and work of our finance and development teams, which are the scaffolding, support, and foundation that let the rest of Circle's work happen. So thank you all, and please go check them out and learn more. As the event name implies, I am here to provide some updates on how we find the state of the Yuba watershed. I'll be touching on some things at high level, and there is more information and questions to be asked if you're interested. By no means will this be all encompassing. I'm here to really encourage you to connect with the experts. We find the state of the Yuba a bit of a mixed bag. Um, we've had some incredible successes over the year, but there are always emerging threats and challenges to be addressed. The watershed is resilient but that doesn't mean it doesn't need some help. Fortunately, at Circle, we have the community support, the relationships, and the expertise to meet the need. Notably, this last winter was one of the snowiest on record, and that led to significantly more water in the South Yuba than we've seen in quite a while. <laughs> yeah, we all love a wet year. Circle is the hub for the stewardship of our recreational resources. Thanks to our River Ambassador Program and engagement in the Nevada County Safety Cohort, Circle was positioned to play a central role in safety messaging during the extended spring snowmelt. As we continue to learn more about the challenges PG&E is facing with some of their infrastructure in our watershed, we are probably going to get another very extended spring runoff season. Our River Ambassador Program is open and looking for more engagement for those that are interested in continuing to help us advocate and be stewards of our recreational resources. Elsewhere and throughout the watershed, global climate change continues to impact things and it's only going to get worse. One result is increasing water temperatures and decreasing dissolved oxygen. Trends of our volunteer river monitors are measuring throughout the watershed. To address this threat, our meadows, forest health, and aspen restoration projects, which were completed this year, are helping slow water down so that it infiltrates into the ground, maintaining cool water that native species rely on. We are helping rebuild ecosystems, which will be more resilient to climate change, and with the help of our volunteers, we're monitoring their effectiveness. A little lower down in the watershed, the California salmon fishery is likely going to be canceled for the second time this year. And Circle is working to meet the threat of extinction head on. We are continuing to construct restoration projects that create spawning habitat and rearing habitat in the lower Yuba River. 
and we're also working hard. We're completed this year are helping slow water down so that it infiltrates into the ground, maintaining cool water the native species rely on. We are helping rebuild ecosystems, which will be more resilient to climate change, and with the help of our volunteers, we're monitoring their effectiveness. A little lower down in the watershed, the California salmon fishery is likely going to be canceled for the second time this year. And CIRCLE is working to meet the threat of extinction head on. We are continuing to construct restoration projects that create spawning habitat and rearing habitat in the Lower Yuba River. And we're also working hard to earn our seat at the table so that we can ensure that as agencies discuss fish passage in the Lower Yuba River, all of the concerns, costs, benefits, and um, po you know, positive outcomes are ensured so that the best alternative is selected. The Yuba has one of the most complex inter and intra basin plumbing in the state and probably the country as well. The dams, flumes, pumps and pipes mean there's always a new waiver request or petition for delay in the issuance of a permit getting published. These requests are also opportunities to emphasize to regulators how crucial the timing and volume of water are to sustaining healthy ecosystems. And a reminder that the old outdated licenses this infrastructure is relying on are tied to very old infrastructure. Perhaps the largest regulatory piece this year was the staff report release of the Bay Delta Plan. Circle reviewed thousands of pages of reports, had multiple meetings with water agencies to have tough conversations, and collaborated and worked closely with our partner environmental organizations. The result so far is a number of comment letters, public comment in Sacramento to the uh, State Water Board, and more than 600 signatures collected during the Wild Scenic Film Festival. And I will be delivering those signatures, as well as additional public comment next Friday to the State Water Board. Through it all, we continue to push for significantly more water to flow to the Golden Gate, to push for expedited implementation and enforcement, because we know the clock is ticking. If you're interested in taking action this evening, you can join Tracy over at our River Advocacy table. We're gathering signatures for a letter to the California Public Utility Commission, encouraging them to deny PG&E's request to split their water and other infrastructure from their business operations, something that has a lot of risk. The demands on our education department have never been greater. It seems the requests increase every year as word gets around among regional and statewide educators. It's incredible to be seen as such a valuable source for environmental education, and keeping up definitely feels like a challenge sometimes. Last year, we worked with more than 5,300 students of all ages. We were on the water for our salmon education programming, we were doing field work, Custom, creating custom lesson plans to compare with Wild and Scenic Film Festival films and spending a lot of time in the classroom. And lastly, I would be sorely remiss if I didn't mention one of the biggest victories for our community this year, led by Ralph, Ray, Christy, and John and Minewash and the defeat of the Rise Gold Petition to Board of Supervisors. For me and the organization, it's also been a time of reflection and looking forward. Our updated strategic plan is nearly complete, and it'll help guide the next five years of CIRCLE's work, which we will continue to do to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow. That's going to look th like things like conducting late night water quality monitoring after getting a concerned phone call from somebody in the community like happened this fall. It's continuing to work with partner environmental organizations and legislature, le the legislature to develop policies and programs to try to do a better job trapping and treating water runoff containing harmful tire preservatives. Continuing to produce a film fest that inspires everyone to take action. And working to increase we have the, pos the positive impact we have in the Yuba and statewide. 
because the threats of climate change, ocean acidification, water quality, and species extinction are not bound by the physical borders of our watershed. We are here because of and for you all. Our work advocating, inspiring, restoring this watershed works because we have your support. It helps us reach students and also provides political pressure so that when Circle goes to Sacramento or talks to a water agency, they know there is political will behind our statements. And that impact takes the grassroots support from members and volunteers like you all. We can't help support incredible students like Asher without your attendance to events like Wild for the Yuba. We can't be effective stewards of our recreational resources without your partnership and support and river ambassadors in the cleanup. And we can't keep spreading the good word of inspiration without your attendance and engagement with the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. So thank you all. This last year, we've taken large steps to increase the impact we have by doing the work across our departments to help rebuild an ecosystem more resilient to climate change and inform policies which recognize that society can't thrive without a thriving environment. So if you're just learning about CIRCLE, perhaps becoming more familiar or have been involved with CIRCLE for the past 40 plus years, we hope you enjoy your beverage got to learn a little bit more this evening, and follow up with anybody out at their tables to learn more if you've got questions. With the diversity of work that we do, I am sure there is something we are working on that align, aligns with your values and interests. So I encourage you to take a drink, perhaps get a refill if you need, and dive in to learn how we can work together to live into the idea that nature is not a place we visit, it is home. Thank you. And with that, I'm happy to take some questions if there are any. Shout them out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so the question was about water in the South Yuba and the Spalding situation, and I'm, I will dive in, but we've got some experts from NID, so if you feel the need to jump up, Please uh, don't hesitate. Yeah, short answer is yes. We'll see more water in the South Yuba than we tend to expect. And what that's gonna look like, and this is gonna get a little technical, so I apologize that, is as the snow melts, we're gonna see a spike, we usually do, but what happens is instead of Spalding being able to kind of capture some of that water and hold it, it's just gonna to continue to spill. So this time of year, it's not gonna look particularly different, but come early June, late June, July, you might start seeing more water than you would otherwise expect or remember. The other thing to keep in mind, and there are a lot of questions here about what happens with the infrastructure and how warm spring gets, the other thing that we're likely to see is that the flow is gonna change throughout the day. So it takes, you know, neighborhood of 24 hours, a little bit less, for snow to melt in the high Sierra and make it to where we are in town. And so showing up to the river in the morning, you might be able to wade across, but that doesn't mean that the snow that melted yesterday, it's gonna start showing up around noon, and it might be a little bit more challenging to, uh, to get back across. So yeah, I would expect the river to look a little different this year than a, a typical sort of average snow year. Anything else? Is there any movement one way or the other in the past year on this continued dam? Uh, question was, is there any movement uh, one way or another on Centennial Dam? And I will, I will say that um, it, the numbers aren't looking good for it. Um, I, you know, there's been a lot of analysis and IDEA has been incredibly thorough in their plan for water. It's something that Circle's been very engaged in. Um, and uh, you know, the, nothing is dead until it's dead, but right now the cost, the dollar per acre foot ratio is um, not favorable to say the least. There are much better ways to kind of help get ahead of climate change. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Anything else? A couple more? Yeah, sure. How are you liking being executive director? <laughs> How am I liking being executive director? I like it. <laughs> it's good. It's a little different than the science job that, you know, I thought I might have at one point, but one of my favorite parts about it is that, you know, I was in Sacramento last night talking with policymakers, talking with legislators, having big conversations, and I am thoroughly enjoying the ability to take that kind of excited science dork thing and policy people and get them out in the field and talk about it. And boy, I tell you what, if you, if you want to change people, people's minds, get people excited about the work that we do, getting them out to stand on the projects and see that work is a great way to do that. And so, I don't know, it's not necessarily what I expected 15 years ago, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I would sign. I think Maddie's your person to sign up with for the naturalist walk. I'm going to be looking to see there. Uh, Maddie, do you who's the naturalist? There we go. You want to come up and talk about it? <laughs> read, read one of our wonderful AmeriCorps is going to tell you all about it. <laughs> Hi everybody. Oh, you're a little taller than I am, but. Uh, yeah, I am taking a naturalist course right now. I'm in AmeriCorps, so I'm working for Circle. And I will be hosting a naturalist walk on May 17th. Uh, everyone should come, it should be fun. We're just gonna hang out, walk around, look at cool stuff, be out in nature. It's in uh, Hammond Grove, it's down on the lower Yuba. Yeah, so hopefully wildflowers will still be out. May 17th, maybe a little late, but. What time, Reed? 9.30 a.m., thank you. <laughs> Where can they learn more? Uh, on our e-news. Yubariver.org. Yubariver.org. <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right, any other questions before I let you all get back to your beverages? Yeah. Sure, quick update on the Lower Yuba Restoration Project. So, a handful, small handful of projects going. The furthest downstream below Daguerre Point Dam is the Hallwood Project, about 142 acres. Um, that's done, we completed, the project completed construction uh, last year, year before Danielle? It was last year, okay. Time's a little weird. Um, Construction was completed last year. We've got some phenomenal post-project monitoring data. The fish that are using the floodplain are growing significantly faster than the fish that are, were there beforehand using sort of edge habitat. Another really exciting thing about that project is that the restoration project completely removed non-native predator species from the project footprint. So where we used to see a lot of uh, striped bass predation, we're seeing none, which is exciting. Further upstream, the Lower Long Bar Project, also a great success story. Vegetation is recruiting and growing at a rapid rate, um, and we're seeing juvenile fish using that and growing quickly. We're, we are, in July, gonna start construction of a spawning gravel project at Rose Bar, a little further upstream. That's uh, stabilization of mine tailings and also creating some spawning habitat in one of the last opportunities before uh, Inglebright Dam. And we're constantly moving forward. We're hoping to secure funding uh, grants going in tomorrow to do another phase of construction at Long Bar, a little bit further upstream. And I was just chatting with Jeff at Yuba Water Agency. We're scheming for another large project uh, at Rose Bar across the way focused on rearing habitat. So a lot of projects and boy, that is, talk about immediate job satisfaction. It's hard to do better than finishing a project and then seeing the species in the project, you know, the day you finish. It's hard to do better than that. <laughs> Yeah. Van Norden Meadows, what's going on with that? Yeah, Van Norden Meadows, another phenomenal success story. Um, water is infiltrating. Actually, Alicia, you want to come up. You're the expert. I can try, but I, she's going to do a way better job. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, so the meat and potatoes of the project was implemented in 2022. Uh, last year, we continued monitoring um, all of our attributes, carbon, groundwater, surface water, plants, and we're just seeing immediate uh, floodplain connectivity at the site. So we're really excited about results uh, from phase one. We do have continued tree removal work planned for this coming fall and next fall, and we have phase two of the project focused on restoration of the Litton fan, which is kind of a hillside drainage that um, we're restoring that as part of phase two. So that'll happen this fall as well. So uh, we're putting out a press release soon. We did secure uh, two and a half million from CDFW for phase two of that project. Yeah. Um, really exciting. And we'll be continuing post project monitoring through 2026. Yeah. It's a great project. All right, well, if there are other questions, feel free to find me or, you know, talk to the people who actually know what they're talking about. All right, thank you all.